Hello! In this video, I'm going to share 25 invaluable tips and tricks to take your Unreal Engine 5 projects to the next level, from hidden features to expert techniques. I'm here to unveil the secrets which will help speed up your workflow, whether you're a seasoned developer or just getting started. I will also include timestamps in the description of this video for all the tips. With that said, let's get started. Let's start off with the first tip. If you're having trouble navigating your level, or you find a position in your level which you really like, what we can do is bookmark that location. So if I go here and click these three arrows, then go bookmarks, I can go set bookmark. So if I go set bookmark zero, it's gonna basically save this location in my viewport. And let's say I move away. If I now press the zero key on my keyboard, it will take me back to that exact location. Another quicker way of making bookmarks is, let's say I find another location that I like, like this one, I can press Control one on my keyboard and it'll basically save that location. And then if I press the one key, it'll take me back to that location as well. So that's just another way of quickly creating bookmarks. We can also use bookmarks in our blueprints. So let's say we're making some blueprint code and we basically wanna save where we are right now. All we can do is click this little bookmark arrow and go create new bookmark and I can just call this new bookmark and add it. Then let's say I move away. To go back there, we can go window and select bookmarks, then it'll show me all my bookmarks and I can just go new bookmark and it'll take me back. So that can be really helpful as well. So let's say you just dragged an item somewhere into a level and you wanna place it on the floor. Sometimes when you drag in an item, it's kind of in the air or you have to like really move it to make it basically just on top of the surface. There is a quicker way to basically make this attached to a surface and that is to just select your item then press the end key and that will instantly snap it towards the closest surface. So if I want this on the floor, I can just go here and then press end and I'll snap that to the floor. So this can be super helpful when you're designing levels. The next tip I wanna show you is how to adjust the pivot point of a model. So I have this door model and as we can see, the pivot point is in the middle. Instead of having to go into some 3D software to edit the pivot point and then re-import it into Unreal Engine, we can actually edit models pivot points inside Unreal Engine. Just select the model you want to edit the pivot point off, then go over here where it says selection mode and change this to be modeling. And we just wanna to go to X form and select edit pivot. And now I'll be able to edit the pivot point of this model. So using this gizmo tool, I can adjust it. So doors normally have a pivot point around the bottom corner. So I'm just gonna add a pivot point there. So here, and now if I just go accept, this will be the new pivot point of that model. And I can even drag in this model from my content drawer and that'll be its pivot point. So this can be a super helpful um, tip because now you can just easily adjust pivot points without having to put your model back in some 3D software. This next tip can help you save a lot of space if you've downloaded some assets from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. So if you go over to your Epic Games Launcher and go over to the library, and if you find the Unreal Engine Marketplace assets that you have, right now we can see that I have around 40 gigabytes of Marketplace assets. And once you've downloaded an asset, you don't really need to use it again, but it will still keep the files. So in order to basically remove the files of an asset, once you've added it to your project, you can just select the asset. It will have like an arrow next to it. If I don't have the asset installed, then it'll be grayed out. But if you do, then it should be highlighted kind of. And we can just select this remove local content. And that'll basically remove the local asset files from my project. And that should save me some space. So you can see, my um, Unreal Engine Marketplace assets has reduced by four gig. So this next tip will only save you a couple of seconds, but I found it to be very helpful when designing levels. So let's say you have an object you want to duplicate. Instead of pressing Control C and Control V, we can duplicate an object by just selecting it and holding the Alt key, and that will allow us to quickly create duplicates. For this next tip, I'm gonna show you how to create a slow motion effect. So I'm in the third person template, and inside my third person character, I'm just gonna make it so when I press the one key, I'm gonna call the flip flop node. So the way this works is first it'll call A, then it'll call B. And to create a slow motion effect, I can just drag off here and look for the set global time dilation. And if I make this something like 0.1, then my whole world is gonna be a lot slower. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it again and connect this into B and then I'm going to type in 1, and this should return it back to its default settings. So if I wanted to speed something up, then I can make this 2. But let's go compile, 
and if I play my project, if I jump and press one, we can see things have become super slow. And if I press one again, things go back to normal. So that's how to quickly create a slow motion effect. If you ever need to rename something, instead of right clicking and going rename, we can simply just select the thing we want to rename and press the F2 button. This is also a universal tip, so I think in programs like Windows, if we just press F2 on a folder, that will also allow you to quickly rename things. Let's say we find a really nice scene in the game that we're working on. What we can do is create a high resolution screenshot. So the way we can do this is by first pressing the G button, this will basically make your viewport look like how it's going to be in the game. If I press G again, you can see it has things like the grid, this light actor, and when I press the G button, I'll basically make it look like how my game's going to look when it's exported. Then to take a high resolution screenshot, we can just click these arrows here and press high resolution screenshot, then go capture. And this will create a high resolution screenshot of just my viewport. I can also just tap the F9 key and that will also take a high resolution screenshot. Then if I press F11, this will basically expand my viewport so it takes up the whole screen. And now if I press F9, I can take a high resolution screenshot of the whole viewport. For this next tip, I'm going to show you how to find specific objects in your level. So let's say I want to go to where this SM Rock 124 is. If I press the F button, it will take me exactly to where that rock is. Did you know we can basically store and use blueprints as text files? So if I just copy all of these blueprints here and I press Ctrl C, then I go to my Notepad app. I can paste my blueprint as a text file and then I can copy all of this text here. Go back to my unrounded project and I can paste it again. And there's also this website called blueprintue.com that takes advantage of this. So I can paste all the blueprints that I have and I can give it a title like test and go create blueprint. And I can basically share this with other people. And this can be helpful if you need to like share bits of code. And it also basically allows you to copy directly from this website into your Unreal Engine project. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make Unreal Engine run a lot faster. So if you're on an older, laggier PC, Unreal Engine may be a bit slow. In order to make it faster, we can just go here and click show FPS. This will basically show us how many frames per second our project is running at. So I have a good PC, so it's at 120 frames per second right now. But if I was on a lower end PC, then maybe it wouldn't be as high. And what I can do to basically make Unreal Engine run faster on my PC is I could go over to settings, then if we go over to engine scalability settings and just change everything to be low, this should make your Unreal Engine project run a lot faster, although it will look a bit worse. If you want to be organized when you're making your project, did you know that you can color code different folders? So maybe I want the characters folder in my project to be a different color. What I can do is just right click on it and go to set color and maybe I'll make it red. Also, we can go up to our blueprints and we can comment certain nodes. So if I select all of these nodes here and press the C button, this will allow me to create a comment around it. I'll just leave this as comment and we can also change the color. And so I can see it from afar, we can click the show overall when zoomed and I'll basically be able to see what my comment is even when I'm really far away. So these ones don't have it, but if I just checked it, I can now see what this is when I'm kind of far away. Next, let's go over some shortcuts to manipulate objects. So let's say I select this cube in Unreal Engine. I can move it with this gizmo tool here. If I want to rotate it, I can select here and rotate it. And if I want to change the scale of it, I can go here and increase the scale of it. But we can also use the W button with the cube selected and that allowed me to basically translate it, move it. I can press the E button. This will allow me to rotate it. And I can press the R button as a shortcut and that allow me to quickly scale it. So that just saves a couple of seconds. And the W, E, R keys are all next to each other on a keyboard. So that's kind of handy. Next, let's go over how we can create holes in objects. So I have this sphere here and I have this wall. And what I wanna do is basically make a hole of this sphere in this wall. The way I can do that is by first moving this sphere into this wall. Then if we just go over to mode and change this to be modeling mode, then select the wall, then the sphere, or the object that you want basically make a hole. Then if we just go over to model and select Boolean, this will basically allow us to create a hole of this sphere in this wall. And I can move this, so maybe I want the hole to be lower or here, or maybe even on the other side. 
So I'm just going to make mine like this. Then I can just go accept. And that will create a hole of the sphere in the wall. Nice. So, when working with Unreal Engine, when we use variables, we can drag them in and we can either get them or we can set them. There's a quicker way we can do this though. If I hold control on my keyboard and I just select this variable and drag it in, it will automatically get it. And if I press the Alt button and I drag this variable in, it will automatically set it. Did you know we can use physics to help decorate our level? So I have this covered in my level. And if I just select it and make sure that it's simulating physics, and then I can just place this, let's say around here. Then if I just make sure that I'm in simulate mode, and if I just click play, maybe I want it so this is how my cupboard is going to be in the game. I can just select this cupboard and press the K button. And now if I stop simulating my game, that's going to be the position of my cube in the game. So using physics, we can basically design our level. If you're designing your level and you want to basically move an actor, if you want the camera to basically move with the actor, what we can do is hold the shift button. Then when we move our actor, our camera will move with it. So this can just be helpful if you don't want your camera to move when you're kind of designing your level and moving objects around. If you're designing your level, instead of searching for the assets you want to basically place in your level, instead, what we can do is press control P. This will bring up our asset window and we can basically search for whatever asset we want and drag it into our project. When you import a model into Unreal Engine, it will import with its own custom collision settings, although sometimes this may be incorrect. So for example, I imported this model of this archway, and if I click the play button, I should be able to walk through it. Although because Unreal Engine automatically generates collisions for objects, sometimes they can be wrong. So let's go over how we can basically make objects have custom collisions. So first, if we just select this object, and we're going to go to where it's located. We can press Control B. That will take us to where the um, file is. Or you can just click this browse button, and that will take you to where it is. And if I just open this up, if we click Show, and then go Simple Collision, we can see the collision for this object. So this green box basically represents the collision for this object. So no wonder my player couldn't go through. But if we just go to the Details panel and scroll down and change this from project default to use complex as collision. This will be the new collision for my um, object. So when we use complex collision, it's a lot more accurate. Although this will mean it takes more resources to basically load this because the collision is a bit more complex. Well, if I now just select this green cube and delete it and save everything, this object will now have custom collision and my player should be able to walk through it. Nice. When working with Unreal Engine, if your map is quite big, you may want to change the camera speed we can do that in two ways. We can go over here and adjust this slider, and this can basically change my camera speed. Or with my mouse selected, if I hold the right mouse button and I scroll backwards with my mouse, my camera speed is gonna go slow, but if I scroll forwards, then my camera speed is gonna become faster. So this just makes it a bit easier to move around large maps. Did you know that we can merge actors together? So I have this cube and this cone mesh, but maybe I want them to just be one combined mesh. The way I can do that is by selecting both of them. Then if I just go over to Actor and select Merge Actors and then select Merge, it will ask me where I want to save this new merged actor. So I'm just going to save it in this folder. And then I can just simply drag this into my level. And now I have this new mesh as one merged actor. When designing levels in Unreal Engine, our default view is this perspective mode. What we can do is change this to be top and then change this to be wireframe. And if we hold the middle mouse button, we can basically measure the distance between two objects. So right now we can see these two cubes are around 652 units away from each other. This can just be helpful when you're designing levels. So by default, if you open up Unreal Engine for the first time, this is how your viewport is gonna look. Although if you're used to Unreal Engine 4, even though I know that's ages ago, if we just go over to Window, we can go over to Load Layout, and I can go V4 Classic Layout, and the layout will look like how it was in Unreal Engine 4. But you may not want this. So we can just go back to Window, Load Layout, and use the default Editor Layout. And then what I normally like to do is if I press the Control Spacebar button, it will open up my content drawer, and I can open this up anywhere. But if I open up, I can click Dock and Layout, 
and that'll make it so it's permanently there. And then if I don't want this here anymore, I can just remove it. But I normally like to have my content drawer docked in the layout. And there you have it, 25 Unreal Engine 5 tips to help enhance your game development skills. But before you go, I have one extra tip. If you want to learn how to use Unreal Engine and master it, check out my website, Unreal Engine University. I have a bunch of courses there which will teach you how to make games. And I have a completely free Unreal Engine beginner course which will teach you the basics of Unreal to get started. Plus, I have some other premium courses where you can learn how to create full games like 2D platformers, FPS games, top-down shooters, and more. And if you subscribe there, you'll gain access to all my courses and all my upcoming future courses. So, that's all for this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!